Hi, my name is Emily Weber. I'm a machine learning specialist at Amazon Web Services. I hope you've been enjoying our videos. We've learned a lot about notebook instances, built-in algorithms, um, using machine learning marketplace algorithms, bringing your own. Uh, we learned about training and tuning jobs. Um, now we're gonna learn about deployment options on Amazon SageMaker, and this is your deep dive. So first off, there's a thing that's called an endpoint, the SageMaker endpoint. What is this? This is multiple, can be multiple EC2 instances. In the case of multiple EC2 instances, they're over different availability zones in order to increase your high availability. When you specify model.deploy in the SageMaker Python SDK, that is a single line of code that you're gonna get to run, right? Just one time, run that cell, that's gonna spin up a managed endpoint. And your endpoint, that's multiple EC2 instances. Each EC2 instance is gonna have a web server that's gonna be able to respond to requests and it's gonna have your model artifact. And so each instance is gonna be serving prediction responses. Those are gonna be handled by a load balancer. So your load balancer is taking care of health checks, making sure that your instances are up. All of those are gonna be sitting behind your model endpoint. Your endpoint is a RESTful API. SageMaker is automatically creating a RESTful API for your specific model, for every model that you deploy on SageMaker. And so it's gonna operate like any RESTful API. You've got JSON uh, accepts and responses. Um, we see customers very commonly using Lambda to connect between your two points. So you've got your API gateway um, when you need information coming from the internet to hit your AWS services. And so most commonly, you're gonna be securing your services with a VPC. So a virtual private cloud uh, that's making sure that your resources are secure. Um, you're gonna open up access between that cloud and the internet using the API gateway. And then AWS Lambda can be a reference point. You're not locked into Lambda, you can actually go straight from your endpoint to the API gateway, or you can use what's called an inference pipeline, which we're gonna learn about in a second here, um, to actually set that up. But Lambda just gives you lots of flexibility and customers love it. So that is your SageMaker endpoint. So your SageMaker endpoint is best for cases of online inferencing. When you have data that's coming in from the internet and you need to serve prediction responses in real time. So we're talking sub-second latency, right? You need your responses to be fast. That's what your SageMaker endpoint is gonna be for. Let's check out an example. Uh, so over here, this training job um, was from a one that we ran previously. Um, so this was for blazing text. Um, so essentially the scenario here, right, we've got those Wikipedia articles um, and those Wikipedia articles are labeled based on the content of that article. And then we plug those into the SageMaker built-in algorithm called blazing text. And just to recap here, so that happened down here, right? That's our container, that's our role, that's our, our resource utilization. And then we specified our channels. We've got our train and validation channel. We set those up down here. Then we called model.fit. And in this case, we got all the logs printed out. Down here, we're gonna hit model.deploy. And so this is another cluster, right? It's another EC2 instance. This was is an M4 XL. And then we're gonna reference that classifier right here. And so when we want prediction responses, those are actually gonna go up and hit our endpoint. Let me show you. So in the console, we can cruise down and look at endpoints. And so this is our blazing text endpoint. Its status is up, this is the URL. So that's actually the one that you're gonna hit uh, when you're making calls. And here's our invocation metrics, right? So we've got, we've got these nice charts here that are gonna tell us how it's performing. That's the name of our model. Our model is gonna have a production variant. That production variant tells us what percentage of traffic is gonna be hitting that model for every point in time. And so over here, um, the two examples that we're sending up, one is about Convair and another is Berwick Secondary College. And both of those come back with different classification responses, right? So the first one has a probability of 99% and that label is a company um, the second one down here is a probability of also over 99% and the label is an educational institution. But let's have some fun, right? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna delete these sentences and I'm gonna paste in, I'm gonna say, Regina Spector is my favorite singer uh, because she plays the piano. All right, 
and there we go. So that is hitting our endpoint, right? That's actually um, being packaged up. Uh, it's a RESTful API, so we have to actually dump it into JSON. Then we just call text classifier dot predict, right? That hits the endpoint. We get the response back, which is another JSON object. So we have to decode it, and then we can actually look at the prediction responses. So some close, some pro tips here just to close things out, right? Definitely turn your endpoints off um, when you're when you're not actually using them. You can write Lambda functions to do this. Definitely um, leverage the serverless architecture that you have in order to turn your instances off when you're not actually using them. You can also use what are called inference pipelines to manage both pre and post processing. So that's where you can create a number of containers, um, up to five containers, and then actually just run them sequence to sequence. So you'll have you know, one container that's managing your feature pre-processing. That's going to pass it into another container where you're doing your model inferencing, which will then pass it out to a post-processing. That's going to be your if-then-else statement based on the confidence level that your model actually identified. So you can deploy that entire inference pipeline as a single endpoint. Um, those containers are going to be co-located on the same EC2 instance, so just make sure you're picking your resource correctly um, so that you're not going to run into any memory or disk errors. Um, you can also have more models in a single Docker container, right? So even though a Docker con it's one Docker container per training cluster, you can definitely have multiple models in that container. Um, you just have to write the code, you know, in a way that in the way that does the job, um, and also making sure that you have sufficient infrastructure to get that done. Uh, definitely think about the amount of data that's hitting a single endpoint. Um, some of the limitations there are such that you want to not be sending too much data um, for an endpoint. If you've got, you know, more than um, a handful of megabytes, then definitely you want to be sending that up against the batch transform rather than the endpoint. Um, and just to hit this home, you can absolutely train your model somewhere else and then host it in SageMaker, right? So you're not locked in on doing this step by step. If you like your training platform on your on your laptop or you like your training platform somewhere else, um, look at some of the information on our blog series about getting that into the right format and then actually just hosting it in SageMaker so you can use the endpoints or the batch transforms. And so thank you. That's all I've got. Uh, my name is Emily Weber. I'm a machine learning specialist at Amazon Web Services. We just learned about deployment options. And if you're interested, definitely check out our GitHub sites. Thank you very much.